They say everything in Australia wants to kill you, and today's movie proves that thesis definitively. Welcome to Sick Flicks, where I take a deep dive into the cinematic sewer to help you embrace your inner gore geek. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're tackling Russell Mulcahy's called Classic Jaws riff, Razorback. Released in 1984, Razorback was a staple of cable TV back in the second Reagan administration. It's stylishly shot, well acted, and genuinely entertaining, and Scream Factory has just released it on Blu-ray so a whole new generation of fans can find it. But can Razorback kill enough Aussies to earn a coveted five barf bag rating? Let's get to the gore and find out. Oh, and before we get started, today's video is brought to you by patrons Donald Babbitt, Cho Jin, and Jason L. If you'd like to help sponsor some videos and free me from the shackles of YouTube's arbitrary community guidelines nonsense, you'll find a link to my Patreon in the pinned comment in the description below. Seriously, every bit helps keep this show rolling. And now, let's get bloody. We fade in on whatever this is. Is this another Corman ripping off a popular sci-fi movie or what? Oh sweet, it's a production company logo. Check out all the pew pew. Just in case you didn't know, Razorback was an Ausploitation movie. Here's a kangaroo. Crikey, isn't he a cutie? This guy clearly doesn't think so. Damn ruse, eating my Vegemite crop. This is where at least a dozen Australians will head to the comments to well actually me with Vegemite isn't something you grow. Vegemite. Vegemite. <laughs> Yeast extract. <laughs> it gets you salivating, doesn't it? Not really sure if this is a movie or a cutscene for a new Fallout game at this point. Couldn't go either way. We head inside and oh god, a baby. $20 says a dingo is gonna eat it. Gramps is like, I don't know why you're so fussy, little man. I gave you your fosters already. Anyway, this movie is already locked and loaded. I approve. I'd call this blue filter mid-afternoon, but I have no idea what time it's actually supposed to be. But that does count as a house establishing shot. And here comes the monster. Man, this movie is not wasting any time at all. Wait, did he just run right through their whole house? Do they even have building codes in Australia? Damn property brothers, never cleaned up after reno day. Looks like the dingo didn't get his baby, but the Razorback did. Oh God! And title card. This one is way better than the ones we've seen lately. This fixer upper could be yours for the low, low price of three million Aussies. Then, as if losing the kid wasn't enough, Granddad's now on trial for murder. A pig, you say? No, not a cop. A wild pig, starring Gregory Harrison. Fun fact: Harrison is probably best known for his role on the Mash spinoff Trapper John M.D. <laughs> I only learned this week that he was not Trapper John M.D. on the show. Check <laughs> out this dude's hat. That's some peacocking right there. Back at the trial, things are getting interesting. Did you order the code red? Oh wait, wrong movie. Razorback designed and constructed by Bob McCarran. Reportedly, they spent like a quarter of a million dollars on the animatronic Razorbacks in this movie, even though they only get a brief amount of screen time. And I guess we're done in court, because now we're out in the outback. Make a wish! DP Dean Semler also worked on The Road Warrior, which is what got him this gig. Turns out Bill Kerr here is acquitted, and he's late for football practice. Accused is hereby discharged. <laughs> and directed by Russell Mulcahy. Russell gonna start making music videos, which is very clear in many of this film's stylistic choices, but is probably best known for giving us the greatest movie ever made. Highlander. There can be only one! Wait a minute, did we just wipe cut to New York? Is this an Italian cannibal movie? Oh, this is just where Gregory Harrison lives. Gotta hurry, I'm pulling a double at the hospital tonight. For some reason, I'm getting chud flashbacks here. Gregory's a great hubby though. Here babe, have a Budweiser for the road. Oh god, now we're watching his wife watch herself on TV. Inception. She kinda looks like a clearance rack Sally Kellerman. <laughs> what the hell is going on with that apron? This is probably gonna get me demonetized. Again. Anyway, we're getting tons of exposition here. She's headed to Australia. The agency greenlighted the Australia special today. I mean, that is pretty convenient since there aren't any Razorbacks in New York City. But he's gonna sweeten the pot before she leaves. Oh honey, you went to Jared. <laughs> and weird shot. Wait a minute, this dude's covered in Gru. Is he a were-razorback? Because I'd watch that movie. I love that this bird is like, hey, wait for me, guys. Discount Leslie Stahl is already here and hard at work. Tonight on 60 Minutes, we explore Australia's burgeoning killer pig problem. And I don't mean Andy Rooney. 
Inside the bar, it looks like a real sausage party. Oh yeah, one lady in the whole place. She's gonna have a great time. I bet she's gonna try to order a Cosmo and immediately out herself as not being from around here. Turns out, this place is so primitive, they don't even have a phone. How do we get a message out? Well, it was a radio phone, it might take an hour or two to get through. She probably thought they were going to the Outback Steakhouse, not the actual Outback. Or maybe not. Double-fisted drinking. She seems to be fitting right in. Day drinking is interrupted when Bill Kerr shows up. Guessing he's our Outback version of Quint. <laughs> oh yeah, this is definitely Quint. There isn't a season for Razorbacks, girlie. Then why kill him? There's something about blasting the shit out of a Razorback that brightens up my whole day. I'm not talking about working for a living. I'm talking about Razorbacking. Sorry, sometimes my inner Quint just takes over. I think that went well, right? Hey, since when do they have camels in Australia? Clearly it must be hump day. Anyway, Leslie's on the phone with Russell Mulcahy. Look, Russ, you told me this was a movie about a boar, not a boring movie. Hmm, looks like someone's playing blindfolded darts again. They don't know what they're missing. She heads off, but look out. Looks like the creeper from Jeepers Creepers is tailing her. You will never convince me that Mad Max isn't a documentary about daily life in Australia at this point. Sama says to the guy, that's not a knife. This is a knife. While he's regaling the locals with tales of New York, Leslie's out here filming a new travel vlog. Welcome back to my channel, guys. Today we're on beautiful Tatooine. That camera seems like overkill for vlogging. Oh, sweet. The creeper's back with a fresh batch of bodies. Dude looks like an extra from the torture scenes in Videodrome. And now things are getting pretty steamy in here. Hell yeah. No, not like that, you pervs. I mean, there's actual steam in this shot. The chef at Golden Corral prepares for the dinner rush. Leslie's already imagining the Emmy this investigative journalism piece is going to win her, but surprise, she's been busted. Just like this window. I will say, I love that these two look like they could have been extras in Ichi the Killer, though. And this dude is still drinking. And I says to her, love, you're as useful as an ashtray on a motorbike. Bold choice not to like this scene at all. Dude's got a face that looks like the love child of Robert Zadar and Bruce Campbell. Leslie's headed home and listening to a little Duran Duran on the radio. Fun fact, director Russell Mulcahy made several Duran Duran videos, including Hungry Like the Wolf, which was instrumental in getting him this gig. But rockin' out time is interrupted when the creeper shows up. Man, that thing got some sweet air. Oh yeah, this is definitely a Mad Max movie. Honestly, this is how I have to merge on the freeway in Florida because no one knows how to drive here. It's supposed to work like a zipper. Yeah, just another day on US-19, driving by Braille, basically. Do you know why I pulled you over, ma'am? You were driving erratically. This body cam footage is going to come back to haunt him, though. But it's going to get worse, because he's got an indecent proposal for her. Do you want to make love? Turns out she's not down for that, so she gets a heapin' helpin' of pimp hand. Things look bleak for Leslie, but don't worry. Remember that Razorback from the title? Turns out he's still in this movie. But she's not out of the woods yet, because she's still about to get rammed. Hell yeah. No, 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 not like that. By the boar. Wait, that still sounds dirty. Oh, hi there. Gotta say, this is the weirdest version of Charlotte's Web ever. And down goes Leslie. Aw oh, man, they trashed the Ford Falcon. She only had 45 more payments left. Don't worry though, Australian Quint is on the case. And this Razorback's not like fishing for bluegills or tommy cods. This boar will swallow you whole. Honestly, I've never been to Australia, but these movies have me convinced the whole place looks like a post-apocalyptic wasteland. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I've seen plenty of beautiful shots of Australia. Whoa, Simon Pegg's looking rough. Hey, Gregory Harrison is still in this movie too. Or at least he's taking a bus to get closer to the main plot. Look at him. He's like, great, stuck in the window seat and I really have to pee. I'd say this shot looks like Cleveland the morning after the Browns lose the Super Bowl, but we all know the Browns are never going to the Super Bowl. Go Steelers. Well, it's still nicer than Detroit, I guess. Anyway, he's here looking for Jake. Cullen, not Jake from State Farm. Yeah, you head down four kilometers until you see the Wallaby, then you hang a left at Koala Cove. If you see Crocs, you've gone too far. Aussie Quinn is living his best life in a van down by the river. <laughs> Except there's no river. Did I ever tell you about that time the three little pigs owed me money? Turns out these Razorbacks are just like me. He's only got two states of being. Dangerous or dead. Nothing in between. 
Okay, fine. My two states are bored and tired, but the point stands. Shit, bullshit. Hey, there's no reason to get personal, Quint. Carl heads off to investigate, and I guess everything really is bigger in Australia because that's the biggest toilet I've ever seen. After dropping the kids off at the pool, they put Carl to work. Clearly there's no OSHA in Australia because there's no way these guys would still be open with all of these safety violations. Then they head out. I feel like this might be turning into an Aussie version of Dumb and Dumber. Also, why does this guy sound like Fran Drescher? <laughs> Carl's now their guest, but I'm not sure this place is really going to get a good Yelp review from him. You can hose off under the tank if you like. Hey, is that Barry Manilow in the background there? Decor by Leatherface. No red flags here at all. No, sir. Russell is clearly going the Jaws route here, hiding his monster early, but it appears as though business is about to pick up. Oh yeah, this thing is going hog wild. Don't fret though, Hillbilly Jim is on the case. Back at Dicko and Benny's place, we get what might be the greatest wake up line ever. Mikey, Mikey, hands off Snikey. Yeah, that's definitely going into my rotation. After some jibber jabber, they head out on a hunt. Yeah, that's definitely a Florida parking job right there. So if you didn't already make the connection, this looks a lot like the scene in Jaws where Hooper and Brody go out at night to find Ben Gardner's missing boat. They eventually kill a kangaroo, much to Carl's chagrin. I'm so sorry, Kanga. I'll look after Roo for you. Oh, this is just like Empire Strikes Back when Luke sleeps in the Tauntaun. Um, is he having a weird dream or did my edibles finally kick in? Before we can get an answer, the Razorback shows up. <laughs> Looks like we've wandered into yet another Claudio Fragasso shoot. <laughs> What's he running from? I haven't the foggiest. Well, that's some pig, all right. Not sure if this is a great time to go tilting at windmills, but whatever you want, Don Quixote. You'd think this windmill would be more popular. I mean, it has a huge fan base. And now, three dozen little pigs have turned the tables. Fun fact, Gregory Harrison did most of his own stunts and hurt his shoulder in this scene. He got through the rest of the movie thanks to the magic of painkillers. The bad news is he's stuck in this puddle. The good news is the pigs can't swim. <laughs> Except... You're gonna need a bigger windmill. After fleeing the water, it looks like Carl's about to take a dirt nap. Literally. Um, <laughs> what the hell is this? Men really do think about sex all the time, apparently. <laughs> Not gonna lie, this is probably my least favorite season of Man vs. Wild. I mean, he has too many clothes left for it to be naked and afraid. Oh shit, it's the Great Salt Lake. I think this is where Lori Singer buried the Grand Grimoire at the end of Warlock. Definitely feeling like a Depeche Mode video right now. Oh shit, we've got Graboids. I didn't know this was set in the Tremors universe. Hold on, false alarm. It's just the ghost horse. What the hell, movie? Ghost horse or bony pony, you make the call. But it turns out this was all just football practice. This really is turning into a Proclaimers video. Dude has walked at least 500 miles. I walk 500 more. I guess the good news is that he didn't run into Mick Taylor while he was out there. <laughs> then he sees boobs and passes out. Not the reaction I was expecting, but at least he's up in time for more football practice. But wait, it's a jump scare. <laughs> Naturally, that was just another dream. Look at him. He's like, my wife has been dead for like 10 minutes, but this chick is cute. And thank God Aussie Quint is back. I don't want to track him. I want to nail the bastard's hide outside the pub so everyone can see. You go, Aussie Quint. Back home, we got a taxidermy man. He's going to have a heart attack when he sees what I brought him. Look, I can do Quint lines all day. Don't even test me. One thing you can definitely say about pig hunting is that you spend a lot of time being bored. When he's napping, Hillbilly Jim has actually trapped the monster. Sort of. Yeah, nothing but net. Dude, it's ripping Hillbilly Jim's shack right off the foundation. I don't even know if his homeowner's insurance will cover that. And Carl is still here with budget Olivia Newton-John. Looks like he's hopelessly devoted to her. Damn, this early version of Command & Conquer looks pretty janky. Hey, Vegemite sighting. I dissected a sow last week. Guess what I found? If she says a Louisiana license plate or a half-eaten Alex Kintner, this review is over. Quinn's still looking for the Razorback, and he's found him. This dolly zoom probably looks familiar. Smile, you son of a... Hey, that's Leslie Stahl's ring! Carl is crestfallen, but he's found a silver lining. Well, I guess this means I've got the full green light to make my play for Olivia. She's even gonna cheer him up by singing a few verses of magic. Quint still hasn't found the boar, but Dicko and his pal have found him. Looks like they're about to hunt the most dangerous game. Honestly, it's just an old man sleeping. Maybe not the most dangerous game after all. They don't kill him, but he's definitely never gonna dance again. Meanwhile, Olivia has taken Carl to the bus stop. 
there should be a bus through here at some point in the next eight years. Just keep waiting. Oh, you sly dog. That Razorback hasn't even pooped out your dead wife yet and you're already making your move. Quint's in the shit, literally, and the pigs are coming for him. This is for all the bacon you ate. He eventually makes it inside. Quint, Quint, that's a sewage line. Hey, I thought the little pigs were supposed to be in the house, not knocking on the door. Oh shit, Big Daddy's home. Probably gonna give Quint some tusk love. Yeah, he's gonna huff and puff. Um, wait a minute, is Quint dead? He's the only guy in this movie I actually like. I don't know, I'm not entirely sold Carl and Olivia Newton-John are somehow gonna kill this giant monster. Apparently she isn't either because she's making a run for it. But before we can get to that, I guess we can watch Carl do his best walking tall impression as he hunts down Benny and Dicko. And sure, I guess we can derail the entire movie to hunt Benny. I mean, it would probably be more useful to hunt the boar, but whatever. Of course, Carl's a city slicker, so Benny gets the drop on him. What is it with this movie and injuring legs? It's like the third one. Unfortunately, Benny's just hanging around. Looks like he's about to drop in unexpectedly. Back at the pub, this NRA meeting looks like it's going great. Woohoo! Evil dies tonight, mates! Back at Pet Pack, Dicko's about to enter the arena for this Cypress Hill show. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely shooting a Fergasso film in there. Hey, Carl, pretty sure the Razorback is not in this meatpacking operation. Anyway, now Dicko wants to introduce him to his biggest fan. He flees, and if you guess the truck won't start, give yourself a screenwriter's credit. Stop, you're gonna flood it. Um, what happened to the Razorback? This is not the climax I paid to see. Oh, here he is. Very Kool-Aid Man-esque entrance there. Oh yeah. Dicko uses the diversion to make a break for it, but he runs right into the pig. Say when you will, but Babe is a real savage. Carl's still alive, but the pig is still coming. Did Jaws 3 steal its climax shot from this movie? Not <laughs> great. Now he's chucking bottles at it like it's an opposing team's player in a Philadelphia Flyers game. You suck, pig! The good news is Carl's not alone. Reinforcements are here. Shit, it's just Olivia. I'm sure this is fine. She better hurry, though, because the pig is about to feast. And now it's after Olivia. Run, Olivia! Rats! Foiled again. Anyway, this might be a giant pig, but he's also stealthy. Things are looking bleak for Carl because he's in a corner tighter than a pig in a blanket. He's not going down without making a few points, though. <laughs> it's like pig hors d'oeuvres. With the pig injured, Carl goads him into a little cat and mouse. Come on, you bastard! Show him how to deliver that line, Linda Day George. Bastard! Bastard! Then somehow the pig winds up in the fan. That's how the sausage is made. Free bacon for everyone. Oh god, are the Cenobites about to show up? And jump scare! Olivia is still alive? Freeze frame ending. Oh yeah, he looks totally broken up about his dead wife and baby. So, what have we learned from Razorback? Well, for starters, there are definitely a lot of things in Australia that want to kill you and giant boars might be near the top of the scary list. Mulcahy's film is basically Jaws in the Outback, and in the realm of Jaws homages, this is one of the best. It's stylish and moody and basically unforgettable. But is Razorback gory enough to earn a five barf bag rating? Let's go to the gore card! In terms of gross anatomy, Razorback is pretty middle of the road. You've got lots of animal carcasses, plenty of wounds, and a great looking killer boar, but that's about it. The animatronic boar is very cool, but it's not on screen much, which is a bummer. Because of that, I can only give Razorback a three barf bag rating. This is a modestly sick flick, but it's still a cult classic. Looking for another Jaws ripoff where a real life man eater runs amok? Then be sure to check out my review of Killer Crocodile 2. You'll find the link here on the screen. I'll meet you over there. Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters.